Welcome to the Daily Word, verse by verse. Grab your Bibles and follow along as we study the book of Galatians. Keep in mind, I am using the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So if you're using a different translation, the read is different, but the message is the same. Also, keep in mind that these Daily Word, verse by verse studies are uploaded to my YouTube channel, BP the Bible Perspective. That's BP the Bible Perspective. So like and share these videos and subscribe to BP the Bible Perspective. Now we are in chapter 6, and um, I'm going to go back to verse 16 again. This I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you not carry out the desires of the flesh. Now this is the Christian walk, how we should walk. And notice he doesn't say, care, walk according to commandments, ordinances, traditions of men, opinions of men, commentaries of men, religious organizations, denominational creeds, etc., etc., Walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the Spirit, and the Spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposite, opposed to each other, so that you won't do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So, the last few videos have been talking about these, uh, what the flesh is versus the Spirit. Your Spirit is born again for the life. I'll get more into that when we come to this other section. What is important to understand is man is a spirit, he lives in this, has a soul, and lives in the body. Adam, through his sin, alienated man from the life of God. Man began to live then by his lower nature, the flesh, his five physical senses. Now the problem, of course, is when we became Christians, our flesh didn't get saved. Our spirit got saved, but our flesh didn't get saved. So now we have a struggle. Every believer has a struggle. Now, verse 19, he says, Now the works of the flesh are obvious. So now he's going to get into what those works are. But again, I, I want to understand that every believer struggles with his flesh. Every believer has inclinations to sin. And so, the sin that you probably majored in <laughs> and struggled with in your life before you came to Christ, you're going to struggle with that all of your Christian life. Now, different people have different inclinations for sin. There's some people who struggle with alcohol. There's some people who struggle with drunkenness, addiction. I don't. I never had an addiction problem. I never smoked, never drank, never did drugs, never had an inclination to, never had a desire to. Um, but I do have struggles with sin. Everybody had an inclination from sin. If we even want to go a little darker. But let me, first of all, let me read something. Let me read, um, go back and um, let's look at this. Notice he says that the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, prom uh, moral impurity, promiscuity. Now we that's a given. We all know that. You know, sexual sins, we we all know that. Adultery, all that we all we all know that. Verse 20, adultery. Think about that now. Notice he says that adultery is a work of the flesh. Sorcery, okay, not the magical arch kind of sorcery, but the kind of the bewitching of people. Hatred, notice that, that's the work of the flesh. Strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger. Selfish ambition, dissensions, people who cause dissensions, people who cause divisions. Factions, that's interesting, cliques we call them. We call those cliques. I want to hang out with this group of people. Verse 21, envy. Drunkenness, carousing, not as carousing as party spirit, and anything similar. He says, I tell you about these in advance. As I told you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'll come back to this statement later. But notice what the works of the flesh are. And the point I want to make is we all have inclinations for one of these, if not, if not some of these, maybe all of these, right? If you want to go darker, in other words, my flesh, remember, through the five physical senses, 
if we look at all these things, seeks gratifications. It is interesting, notice, that things like hatred, notice this, selfish ambition is the work of the flesh. Wanting to be a part of a clique is the work of the flesh. And what's amazing is that we don't kind of count those. We, the sexual immorality, oh yeah. In other words, you would get put out of the church, defrocked, if you are sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity. Now, in your older, um, other translations of the King James, adultery and fornication, the words are used. Okay, but but the idea here is you get put out of the church for one of those for sure. Um, if you bow down, by the way, adultery, covetousness. Paul defines covetousness as idolatry in, in, the, in the book of Colossians. And so, again, uh, idolatry is just not building a statue or a carved image and worshiping it. Hatred. If you hate, notice that. You're, it's the work of the flesh. Very few people get put out of a church because of hate. Strife. How many times do people not get put out of a church because of strife or jealousy? But notice these are all listed as works of the flesh. Now these things are what? This is what comes out of your flesh when your five physical senses that we all walk in this evil world. Now I remember I quoted 1 John 5.19 that the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. That the world means that the world around us, the environment, this cosmos, this system. You cannot turn on a television or radio, and nowadays social media, media without um, um, some type of graphic image. I, I sent my wife a, an, an insurance app, app. I kid you not. And uh, I said, I'm really curious about this insurance app. It was an insurance app that's supposed to be able to um, compare different insurance rates and all that. But, I kid you, but the, the advertisement was this very, very curvaceous uh, woman. And she was thinking, why are you sending me this? I said, I wasn't sending the woman. But my point is, is that, but it did do its job because that's not why I clicked on, but it did do its job. Okay, it was a very, convert, very extremely curvaceous woman. My point is, we all have clean, uh, inclinations to certain type of sins. That's why some people, they can have an inclination to homosexuality, lesbianism, right? Adult, uh, adultery, um, but what do we, let's go dark. How about some people have inclinations to bestiality? We, a lot of people are smart enough to don't talk about it, but th there are some people that do that. They have those inclinations for that. Necrophilia. Notice this, murder. How about murder? There's people that have inclinations for murder. They like to murder people. They get a thrill out of murder. And those the extreme if you let it go to the extreme. But that's why I, 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 it's an unfortunate that sometimes when you when you um, you put people in certain environment, then those these works of the flesh thrive. As a society, we are moving more and more to the freedom of these works of the flesh. Now, as Christians, when we come into the faith, he's exposing this, saying, "Uh-uh, don't walk in these things." So when he says here, um. In verse 21, as I, again, as I told you before, the last sentence, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, what, what does he mean by statement? In other words, you have to understand when Paul uses these sort of contrasts, remember he talks about the mercy of God, the propitiatory work of Jesus Christ as the mercy seed of God. So is he saying here that if I go and commit an act of sexual immorality, I will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, some people, when they don't really understand Scripture, yes, they preach that. But if you're going to preach that, then you have to also say that someone who has an outburst of anger, that someone who has selfish ambition, envy, drunkenness, all of these things right here. In other words, when you look at certain religious uh, and, and traditional denominations uh, and what they teach, you know, here's how they kind of read this. Sexual immorality, uh, moral impurity, promiscuity, dietary, sorcerers. They skip over hate, skip over strife, skip over Jeffrey. Outbursts of anger, maybe. 
Selfish ambition, eh, dissension, they don't care about that. But drunkenness, oh yeah, and carousing, those, you'll get, kick, you, 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 you'll get kicked out of your church or your ministry for those things. But now let's go back. Notice what he says right here, jealousy, outburst of anger. How about this, dissension, you're the one called this dissension. Faction, you don't get to put you out of church over that. All of those things are the work of the flesh. All of them are the work of the flesh. Now, when he says that those who practice those things, he makes a distinction that those who are, who are not saved, who practice those things, they live in those things, it's a marker. Not, okay, this person did this five times, we now brand them this. It's very tricky because now there's a little thing in ministry where people call where you're disqualified. Like I say, they never disqualify people for... Uh, factions and things like that. But anyway, um, so he says, but those who practice such things don't have the kingdom of God. The idea is that the context of those who are doing these things haven't been saved. Now we get to the, again, I think it'll become clearer even more so in the next set of, uh, uh, of videos. Okay. But I want to close with this. The idea of understanding my flesh that in my flesh, I make certain decisions because I know the works of the flesh. They're there. Let me also say this. Um, a lot of people think if I fast, my flesh won't desire those things. Your flesh, through the five physical senses, is always constantly being incited. Right? Incited to sin. Why? Because you're in an evil world. The whole world is there. So if you think, I'm never ever going to do these things. Because if I do some spiritual or fake spiritual thing like fasting, some people think if I fast 21 days, if I fast twice a week, I won't have these urges. You will have these urges. Moses fasted 40 days and still had those urges. He did not not have them. By the way, remember, Moses had an outburst of anger that cost him the promised land. This was after he had spent 40 days and 40 nights in the, pro uh, in the promise of God. He was glowing. It was glowing, okay? So the, I, the my point is that where our adjustment to our flesh is, is that I say no to it. I don't think that I'm never, ever going to uh, be tempted, you know, incited to say no. That's why there's certain, dis, you know, uh, relationships I don't get into. There's certain moves I don't make because I know I'm going to sin. Um... All right, we're going to pick it up in verse 22 in the next video, so I will see you.